So yesterday I mentioned this, this concept of, of nutritional ketosis and that there's a, you know, that's been around for, for, you know, we've understood this for decades, but the new thing here is that uh, beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is the primary ketone we make when we are in nutritional ketosis, when it circulates through the bloodstream, not only does it provide a superior energy supply for brain and heart, but it turns out that it has a, what I would call a hormone-like activity that is, it's something made in the liver that circulates through the blood, then throughout the body, it alters gene expression. So it has epigenetic effects that alters how we respond um, to uh, oxidative stress and inflammation. And this, was, this revolution was kindled by uh, a group of scientists at the University of California, San Francisco, uh, led by Eric Verdon and John Newman. And what they've def uh, demonstrated is that Beta-hydroxybutyrate alters how genes are expressed in the body, and some of the principal genes that they alter are genes that regulate our internal defenses against oxidative stress. Uh, and specifically, when you don't have ketones around, those defending genes are turned off. When you have ketones in your blood at a modest level, that those defense genes are turned on. Um, and this really revolutionized our perspective, revolutionized our perspective of beta-hydroxybutyrate, and it kind of invigorated me to look more deeply into the therapeutic benefits of nutritional ketosis. I put this up there just to say this is extremely complex. One way in which um, oxidative stress translates into inflammation is uh, these things called free radicals or reactive oxygen species attack polyunsaturated fats in our membranes and then turn those polyunsaturated fats into things that look like prostaglandins, but they're not. Uh, there are things called isoprostanes, but they have similar pro-inflammatory effects. Another way in which beta-hydroxybutyrate is known to alter inflammation is there is a very potent regulatory gene which has the very uh, long name of the NLRP3 inflammasome, and this is a, a, an assembly of different proteins in the nucleus that when they come together, uh, and uh, in the presence of our genes, they regulate a whole bunch of inflammatory processes in, in our body. So this is a master regulator which has multiple downstream effects, uh, altering, oxidate, or altering inflammation. And beta-hydroxybutyrate in physiological doses blocks this assembly, so it blocks downstream inflammation. Not completely, but it modulates it in a physiologically normal way because ketones are normal compounds of our, of our metabolism, particularly when we restrict carbohydrates. So that leads me to the concept on the left. If you eat a ketone-suppressing diet, it alters the body's, or it increases the body's uh, production of reactive oxygen species in mitochondria, and you get these downstream effects of membrane damage and pro-inflammatory effects, whereas if you eat a ketogenic diet, which is actually a fairly narrow spectrum in terms of lo it's very low carbohydrate, not moderately low carbohydrate. Uh, you block the NLRP3 inflammasome and you pr block the productions of isoprostanes, and that's how we get these, these anti-inflammatory effects. So how much of an anti-inflammatory effect do we get with this? I mean, does this come anywhere near what we could do with a monoclonal antibody? Well, Jeff Volek and his team did this study, and they let me kind of sit in as a, a fly on the wall watching them do this. This is a study published in 2008 in which they put people with metabolic syndrome, so prediabetes, on two different diets. Uh, one group ate a relatively high carbohydrate diet um, with moderate protein and, and quite low fat. And the second group ate, got 12% carbs, 28% protein, and high fat. Um, the high uh, fat, low carb group lost more weight than the low carb, uh, the low fat group, but they were um, uh, roughly equivalent uh, or, or, or similar in, in terms of the rate of weight loss at the end of the study. And when we measured 14 different biomarkers of inflammation, we we'll go through to this one, 14 different biomarkers of inflammation, we looked only at where the two groups differed. Both groups are losing weight, but the group that were on the ketogenic diet seven of those 14 were significantly further reduced with the ketogenic diet. So this in, in, indicates that this is an across-the-board, broad-spectrum result rather than the very focused effect that you'd get from a drug. 